Well, was Innocent the Third the best pope? Uh, this video is a bit removed from my usual subject matter, both in uh, content and time. Uh, Innocent was pope from 1198 to 1216. He was an activist, he was a reformer, a rule giver. Uh, for some, he represented the peak of papal performance and rectitude during the Middle Ages. Others may see him as a racist, a bigot, a force for evil. Well, let's look at both sides. First of all, those who say, yes, he was. He was a great pope, perhaps the greatest. Uh, well, those people who see him as the greatest pope see him as a reformer. They look to his accomplishments at the famous Fourth Lateran Council in 1215. I'm indebted, by the way, to David Starkey for pointing a lot of this out. Uh, the results of that conference have had an impact to this day. Innocent forbade priests from participating in trial by ordeal, thus laying the groundwork for uh, jury trials and evidence-based justice. That's pretty important. That was an enormous accomplishment in itself. He also took uh, steps uh, in the question of consanguinity, forbidding marriage among people too closely related. Starkey points out that this was a major step toward removing uh, rule by intermarried families and uh, substituting for it the first vestiges of, of nationhood. There are still some countries that operate this way and you probably wouldn't want to live in them. Unless there be any doubt about this consanguinity issue, it's a recipe for disastrous health problems. Uh, interbreeding leads to genetic difficulties. There are communities in Britain that still encourage the marriage between close relatives, and they have orders of magnitude more birth defects than the population as a whole. Innocent's attention to this matter was overdue and highly commendable. Good for him. Uh, he viewed other religions as a threat to the church, and as enemies he was vigorous in his violent suppression of the Cathars in France via the so-called Albigensian Crusade. If you're a Catholic, you might see this as a good thing. And of course, if, if you don't uh, uh, see it as a good thing and aren't a Catholic, you might not. Anyway, what about those who said he was not? He, he was not only not the greatest pope, he was not even a good pope. Uh, they would say, in fact, he was a destructive tyrant. Uh, his orders, his activities at fighting Muslims and Protestants, well, they label him as a force for evil. And in this respect, the, the traditional Catholic notion that anyone opposed to the church can be attacked with moral impunity uh, bears on this one. They could even, some of them, gain remission of sins for fighting heretics. He was a bigot of the First Order, and he, under, he undertook the disastrous Fourth Crusade. That was an endeavor largely ignored by most European states. I think they'd have had enough of the Crusades. Uh, and uh, it not only failed in, it, in its objective of recovering Jerusalem, but it resulted in the great schism between Rome and Byzantium via the sack of Constantinople a split which still exists. He was thus a military and diplomatic failure. Let's be honest, uh, many of those who participated in crusades were thugs, so that really fits right into what happened. They were looking for booty and violence, uh, nothing to be proud of. The recent Pope, John Paul II, actually acknowledged and apologized for the disastrous results of that crusade. Uh, and those opposed to his position as a great pope might also comment that what a pope of 800 years ago did is of no concern or importance and therefore not even worth wasting time on. So that's, that's the case against his greatness. Well, what's my take on Pope Innocent III and his greatness? Well, I, I would say that his performance and, and even his morality was a mixed bag. His bigotry and and making non-Catholics the enemy, uh, that was reprehensible. But nonetheless, one that most people kind of came to accept in those early violent and primitive days. On the other hand, on the other hand, his reforms on law and 
ruling families were most important, and I must reluctantly admit, put him right up there with one of the most important holders of the keys of St. Peter. Well, I'm sure I'll get plenty of pushback on this one, but that's how I come out. So if you liked it, please do the usual. Subscribe, uh, comment, give me a like, uh, notify, and I'll see you at the next one. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.